Uh, hello everybody, this is Fabrica Academy 2019, uh, week seven, open source hardware from fibers to fabrics with uh, Varvara Gulaleva and Mark Annette, uh, an artistic duo that uh, are based in Estonia and they have a great amount of work as uh, interactive uh, artists and they have also made an open source circular knitting machine. Um, um, maybe Varvara, you can uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, artistic work before you start uh, with the presentation. You can introduce a little bit of what you're doing currently. They have a very nice lab in Estonia, so if you ever visit uh, Estonia, I would recommend that uh, you visit them. And uh, yes. It's a mess. <laughs> very nice. Thank you for being us with us for the third year. We are very happy and every year we are more and more excited with this exercise, the making our own machines and new processes. And uh, we always have uh, better and better results. And last year it was the most exciting uh, week for us. Uh, let's see how it will be this year. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Anastasia. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be already third year with with you. It's unbelievable, actually, how fast the um, time goes, and also it actually uh, gives opportunity also all the time to uh, improve the material also and and the teaching style. Uh, so um, the life circumstances uh, divided kind of us at the moment. So today I will be. Uh, presenting uh, you the material and uh, Mar will be reviewing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's how we'll do this year. And, uh, well, um, yeah, we are mostly uh, working uh, with art and technology. So, uh, we are uh, doing interactive installations and also using data as material. But we always like, uh, let's say, all this digitality to bring bring into materiality, uh, which ends up uh, doing a lot of new tools, which really often, especially like what happens with knitting, the, these tools, what we have developed, they kind of start to live their own life and becomes uh, maybe even for certain communities uh, more important. So that's how actually uh, we ended up in the textile uh, without kind of really having a target in our uh, head. Uh, but I will also uh, tell you more in the in the presentation about this. So, but yeah, if you have more questions, maybe in the end we can talk about this. Yeah. So, shall I share the screen now or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. So. Yeah, it works. So you can see all my first slide, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this um, uh, lecture or the topic will be uh, based on open source hardware. Uh, mostly like idea is uh, to talk about um, machines and techniques and the processes, what uh, kind of exists. I mean, definitely I cannot cover everything, uh, but mostly uh, to kind of um, uh, let us to think about like how actually from from the raw material becomes uh, yarn and from yarn or the thread, the fabric and what is fabric and, and what is the machine and, and what are also uh, a bit politics uh, in between. Um, so yeah, from bi fibers to fabric, you know, uh, and here you see already uh, our circular uh, knitting. Uh, but first, I want actually to talk about uh, the origins of knitting, and uh, well, I start with knitting and then uh, move on to other techniques. Uh, too, but uh, what what is kind of important, I think, to uh, keep in mind that um, knitting and also other um, 
techniques uh, of um, producing textile are pretty old. Uh, for instance, the origins of knitting, uh, they, uh, they already uh, were noted before Christ. Uh, so, um, first there were uh, technique, techniques with uh, knots. So, uh, uh, people already uh, uh, were kind of producing uh, their own uh, pieces of uh, clothes and also uh, joining certain, um, certain other materials by uh, knot techniques. And well, when we talk about the machines, uh, then the interesting fact is that, um, uh, okay, it covers uh, here for me the year number, but I think it was uh, uh, 1568 uh, was invented the stocking frame knitting machine by William Lee. But it never came actually to the industry because um, the English queen, Elizabeth I, refused to give him a patterns. Although, uh, pattern, although uh, his um, machine was able to produce very fine uh, silk garment and so on, but, but uh, she was uh, very, the queen was very afraid of uh, unemployment situation and and the guilds were pressuring not to give the pattern so uh, this machine was invented but never actually uh, saw the light of the industry but uh, the principles actually uh, they remain and uh, get, make the life easier uh, for the further inventions uh, so, when we talk about uh, the machines which really uh, were, use, were used in, by the people and the industries, then uh, the first would be the circular knitting machine uh, in 1880s, uh, where then um, the woolen socks uh, and stockings uh, could be produced and they became very popular during the second and the uh, and the First World War were then uh, not only in factories, but also mostly actually at home, then uh, women were producing uh, woolen socks for the soldiers. And actually these machines are still nowadays also in use because they were very robust from metal and so on. So uh, uh, they're pretty much in use. And we will see actually one example. And then only uh, 10 years later um, uh, appear uh, the flat knitting mas machine, which they, they kind of introduced who were selling it uh, as for a cottage industry. So cottage industry also is a very small scale industry what could be run uh, from home. So why the flatting, flat knitting machine then, well, the circular mostly uh, would produce and the stocks or kind of a tubular garments and flat ones. They are of course much more uh, interesting for the uh, for the kind of more uh, flat uh, uh, knitted garments, like for doing uh, the coats, the sweaters, dresses, skirts, uh, also blankets and so on. And uh, and so. Uh, Actually, well, industry at home already appeared then and before, not uh, not uh, as the paradigm of third industrial revolution, as it is written in uh, in the books after the three D printers appeared on our desktops. Uh, so uh, when we jump a bit, like in time, uh, I will talk uh, about brother knitting machine, what we have used uh, a lot, and this is the main. Uh, knitting machine uh, in the uh, or was in the market, uh, so they were very um, cutting edge. Uh, in, 50, in 1955, there, they came with the first knitting machine, which was non-punch cart one. In the 71 came already the punch cart uh, machines, which are still used uh, today. And some women are using even for doing um, kind of their their business or partly business out of it. And in '79 uh, came out. Uh, yeah, the numbers are a bit wrong actually. Uh, in '79 it came out the electronic knitting machine, which then uh, could be programmed uh, by floppy. 
So uh, if we look around in the industry, floppy use is kind of very common uh, still. Uh, but here is kind of interesting also note that um, uh, that uh, it is uh, the first uh, personal computer came 73 and then just three years later came already so to say personal electronic knitting machine which uh, nowadays we actually still are missing on our uh, desktop uh, th at that time already came that you could do your patterns on computer and then put into your uh, knitting machine but then in 96 uh, they uh, discontinued and uh, they are mostly like uh, uh, second-hand machines on the market and of course either you have to hack it or use uh, floppy uh, disk or punch cards or also teletext uh, or manual input for programming these machines for the pattern uh, but uh, but still as I already said before that the electronic knitting machine was a first uh, personal manufacturing tool at home when we talk about uh, this paradigm of the desktop uh, fabrication. Um, as I told uh, before uh, with uh, the William Lee um, example who invented the, the first knitting machine that his principles from the 16th century they still are alive today so actually when you look again into industry uh, and uh, just to take the spinning machines, uh, they haven't really changed, over the hundred years have passed and they haven't really um, changed. Well, the photography has changed, uh, but, uh, but not the machines really. Uh, the same, the industrial drawing frame machines, uh, again, uh, you see that the, the principles are still alive and even the shapes and everything. Uh, sewing uh, also haven't changed uh, drastically. Mm, and here uh, when we talk about principles and, and when, uh, when you start to work with uh, new machines and processes, uh, it's important kind of uh, uh, to stick, at, I think, still to the kind of um, old, not old, but uh, there are like uh, certain, uh, uh, let's say needle movement uh, and so on, that it has been uh, through years uh, functioning like this and, and it's smart actually to copy certain ideas uh, because it's, it's kind of difficult to invent a new type of uh, stitches or, or way of, of knitting. Uh, maybe reframe the machine, yes, uh, but I think uh, uh, the techniques has to be quite clear how, how it is functioning. And when you know how it's functioning, actually, uh, it's, um, it is not such a miracle uh, to repeat uh, this kind of uh, process, but in different way, maybe. So here is explanation of how the carriage moves the needle. Let's see how it will work. In this animation, the machine cams are set for all needles knitting, all cams in action. As the cams travel over the needle, the needle butt enters the cam track and is raised by raising cam labelled R. It is then raised to its highest point by knitting, tucking cam labelled T. The action of the needle being raised has caused the previously formed stitch to slide down the shank of the needle passing over the latch. The needle is then lowered by the guard cam, labelled G, and then further lowered by the stitch cam, labelled S. During the lowering of the needle, new yarn is fed into the needle hook by a yarn carrier 
just before the previously formed stitch starts to force the latch closed, tapping the new yarn in the hook. When the needle reaches the lowest point of stitch cam, labelled S, the previous stitch is pulled through the new yarn, creating a new stitch. needle. Uh, okay, I would like to get more fast. Yeah, maybe here. Uh, well, you saw a jacquard uh, knitting machine, but it doesn't actually doesn't matter. It means the needles were on both sides and actually <clears throat> this way, I mean, it's more difficult uh, machine, I would say like this, but um, uh, this way it makes that the, the fabric is uh, uh, thicker, but you don't see any loops when you do the the pattern, for instance. And there are some more advantages. Uh, but anyways, uh, these kind of needles, they, they are called uh, industrial needles because they are meant for the mechanical and automatic uh, use because they have the lashes, which which kind of like, actually when, when you use them, they 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 open and close really by inerts in a way. Um, so when uh, when they are pushed up and the yarn comes, the, the lashes lash opens and uh, lets the stitch pass uh, behind it, and then it closes while taking the the new uh, yarn. And the, this kind of uh, mounting or the rail is important to guide. Uh, to guide the needle, and later on I have more specific um, uh, specific uh, drawings or schemas for you to understand, like why it has this kind of uh, nose down. It's it's basically that you can take it to the rail and move uh, whenever is uh, needed. So they are kind of like uh, special uh, tricks uh, and. Uh, by the industry already done, so what can be uh, used easily. Uh, so um, and here is uh, I wanted uh, like I wanted to talk about uh, like our story how how we got into knitting and uh, we became in, interested in the knitting machines especially uh, was uh, when we saw. Uh, in Make Magazine, the hack by Becky Stern and Steve Conklin, uh, where they uh, made a um, Python uh, script, script which emulates uh, the floppy. So uh, this in the photo, what you see uh, here is the Brother 930 machine, which can read um, read the patterns and save it into its memory if it comes from the floppy reader. Uh, but yeah, but uh, they made FTDI cable, the special one, uh, and hacked the memory of the machine, and they were able to kind of uh, write to the memory of machine exactly this format that it wanted, uh, and this way uploading the new patterns from the computer directly to the machine. Uh, so um, we had one artistic idea that uh, we um, uh, we wanted to knit the spam poetry. So uh, uh, first making poetry from spam and then uh, the spam poetry turning into a knitted form uh, because we thought just printing them out is too boring. So uh, we found like uh, very, um, let's say, labor and brain uh, uh, needed work for this. So yeah, um, I think we like we like the problem. So um, uh, yeah, we didn't know anything about knitting. So we thought, uh, well, brother knitting machine. Uh, we thought uh, easy. I opened an eBay and. Uh, and I bought one random one because I didn't know that there are like, um, I don't know, 50 or 30 different models. 
So first I ordered, I think it was 850 or something like this. Um, yeah, then I discovered no, this no, then second one. So in the end, uh, we bought like four machines, like buying and selling, buying and selling until uh, we find kind of kind of ultimate. And then already we started to research about the knitting machines. And it came out that 930 is uh, was made for US and it's different file format it has or memory format than 940, which we were able to get. But since we were in residency and we, um, I mean, we had to go on uh, with the projects uh, and we didn't know anything about like studying the memory of the knitting machine. Uh, so we decided to uh, open up the brain of the knitting machine. You can see it here. And since it has also a manual input mode, we thought we are going to hack it and uh, put um, Arduino to press the buttons and our processing code will tell the Arduino what to press according to the pattern. Because um, for knitting machine, as also for the electronic uh, looms or, or whatever pattern, actually, if you start to knit, uh, the white means the uh, background, uh, color and the black means the pattern uh, or pattern yarn color. So it was only the alternation of you had to uh, to enter to the machine. Um, we were lucky that uh, just some time before we were doing um, Fabian Sierra and uh, Travis Goodspeed uh, did a uh, workshop in Mediamatic. I think it was like 2011 or something like this. And they already kind of did uh, experimental hacking uh, of knitting machine there. So um, uh, they did the, they mapped uh, all, this is kind of the keyboard of the um, electronic knitting machine. So that you can also, well, that's how you program basically machine. Uh, because you can also, if you have one pattern, you can also mirror it and stretch it and make it uh, uh, many uh, of them. So it has like a tiny computer in a way inside. Um, so uh, we used uh, their mapping and then, uh, yeah, we automized in, in a way uh, manual input that Arduino was then pressing these uh, buttons uh, according to uh, the pattern or the, the bitmap image in a way. Uh, so um, it, looked, it looks like a hack, but we uh, produced quite a lot. So uh, it was, uh, um, our hack was uploading the bat pattern during the night and uh, during the, uh, the day uh, we were knitting. So for, if you ask me how I, uh, how I uh, learned to knit on the knitting machine, so it took me two weeks uh, watching uh, intensively YouTube. So you can, uh, if you want to really, uh, if you have the machine and you want to learn, there are plenty of material actually. Um, and again, the, it doesn't matter which machine, the basics are the same. So how to cast on, take down, how to expand, shrink, it's exactly the same. You can take bulk machine, you can take PASA, brother, doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, this is uh, partial our production, uh, so to say, from by the brother knitting machine. So you can knit, knit quite uh, fine uh, quality, uh, even actually finer quality than, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the factory will need to you. So you can select better yarn and so on, which is uh, for us as the ones who come, let's say, from digital fabrication world and so on was, um, uh, was kind of striking because normally like, okay, you can 3D print, but it still doesn't look so shiny and nice as, uh, as let's say, some uh, industrial manufacturer will, will do. 
but uh, when you do a textile, it's the other way around. And this is, I think, is uh, advantage. Uh, so yeah, uh, when uh, I became uh, more skilled in knitting, then I became, uh, uh, I started to do also more sculptorical pieces. So the last ones, you couldn't wear them. Like we call it uh, dysfunctional wearables. And this one you can wear connected if you have a partner with you. Uh, so yeah, we need it quite a lot. But then uh, uh, we kind of uh, got bored from our, uh, let's say, manual hack, automated manual hack. And then we decided that we will um, do our own uh, brain for the knitting machine. So we opened it up and uh, took away this um, uh, keyboard, so to say, uh, what it had, uh, and all the man like electronic for in input, because we were using the output of machine, like sensors and so on, to understand where is the carriage and and uh, and uh, to send signals to the solenoids, because solenoids push up push out the needles when you are knitting the pattern patterns. Uh, so we were kind of uh, studying how how to, to do this until uh, we figured it somehow out uh, somehow because uh, these knitting machines they are quite complex and um, and yeah sometimes this uh, there are 16 solenoids eight and eight and sometimes this solenoid just shifts and the whole pattern shifts. And um, and yeah, we, we sold uh, like, it's completely open source. We sold some, uh, some, some PCBs who want it, but the thing is, uh, well, one is PCB, but another one is, if you don't know anything about Arduino processing, then you, get this uh, pile of questions, which then I thought like, I don't really want to do uh, the support for this because it, uh, it really was uh, time consuming. And, uh, and also we understood like, okay, we made this uh, new electronic brain for the knitting machine, but uh, but knitting machine is still it's of old, so sometimes there were some like these hollow magnetic sensors dying and so on. It was impossible to replace, so you are still kind of dependent on this um, obsolete uh, technology. And uh, well, this was the hardware part, uh, but of course, in order to knit directly from uh, uh, from the from the computer, uh, you need also a software, uh, which is, uh, I would say, as complex or, well, it's kind of one in, an, in the end, hardware and software, because one cannot, uh, cannot function with, uh, without another. Uh, so, uh, NITIC is a uh, processing uh, based and, uh, well, it follows the logic of, uh, of the knitting because you you want to know where is your carriage on which row uh, you are knitting you want to be able to shift your pattern so it doesn't have to be uh, like in the center maybe it's more on the left or right and also uh, now uh, regulate how many uh, how many needles you are going to use and and so on so it's it's uh, not easy software, I would say, like this. And uh, well, uh, we also were diff knitting different stuff and also following uh, what uh, in which direction technology is developing. And and in 2013, everyone is talking about EEG and uh, neuro interfaces and so on. So we thought like. Um, why not uh, to knit um, patterns out directly out of brain? And this project is called Neuro Knitting, uh, where then uh, we were uh, recording um, uh, emotional uh, state 
um, while listening a music and converting it uh, into a pattern. So every second, uh, uh, every second of this emotional state was uh, represented in one row of uh, knitted garment. You know, uh, so it actually meant that uh, very unique personalized scarf is also a database of your emotions at that, that certain moment. Uh, well, yeah, this, uh, I, I don't know if you know this project, but uh, many, for us was interesting because suddenly uh, the, it was not classified only as uh, art or craft project or tech project. Everyone was writing about this. So there was like woman magazine, men magazine, furniture magazine, technology, of course, design and so on. So it was kind of everyone found uh, found something for them, which was nice. And, so, and suddenly, actually, this really... Um, tiny uh, combination of traditional craft and high-tech, uh, it produced this uh, wow effect, which for us was pretty normal, but uh, for for audience unexpected. And then uh, we are also quite happy that uh, with our uh, open source uh, project, Nitic, we inspired quite some people like um, there came out uh, by Afraditi Psara project uh, Oikonomic Threads. Uh, she was also um, hacking the old brother knitting machine and knitting uh, data, uh, data garments. Mm, so suddenly the garment became really kind of meaningful also in terms of uh, data. So it has kind of uh, uh, multiple uh, meanings and functions. Uh, maybe you know IAP. Uh, I mean, IAP uh, all, all came out after Nitic, uh, which they definitely uh, got some knowledge from uh, our uh, work. And I, I heard that they don't sell anymore, but they uh, but they managed to do um, uh, boards for multiple uh, brother knitting machines, and they were kind of heavily selling them also. Um, and then uh, Glitch Knit, uh, they hacked the Japanese duo, um, Kanoso and, uh, and someone else. Uh, they hacked this 930, um, uh, 970 brother machine, which was um, uh, kind of smart to do the Glitch Knit because, yeah, uh, that's what we experienced, experienced when we tried to kind of upgrade our machine that you get all the time this random glitches by then this uh, solenoids uh, uh, switching between each other. A uh, quite famous project is OpenNIT, which uh, unfortunately as open source project, it's uh, stopped. We collaborated uh, uh, with uh, Gerard on um, the software level and also uh, we're thinking together with him how to to make it possible, uh, but uh, in open it is is kind of like um, uh, it's very ambitious project it was because uh, uh, he wanted to do straight away from the beginning um, jacar uh, jacar uh, machine kind of like shimasheki uh, because the idea was from one click uh, you get the sweater. So you don't have to do any more the joints, anything, um, which is uh, very cool. But as a first open source machine, uh, super complex to realize. So um, I think it's uh, smarter or wiser to start, let's say, from simple and move to the complex. Because uh, when you start straight away from the complex project, there would be so many errors to solve that it can be like uh, taking you forever and uh, dismotivate you also. Uh, because uh, I don't know really often what happens to us when we go uh, to the to do a workshop or we do exhibition uh, of circular nitic and um, and the persons who know uh, about let's say open source knitting machines and say oh the knitting machine which knits 
because normally they don't need, you know. Uh, so that's um, uh, what happens uh, if, let's say, it's good to have ambitious ideas, but I think it's uh, in terms when you start to develop the tools, it's better to go step by step and then you know what works and what doesn't work. Um, yeah, here is our uh, circular knitting machine, which we uh, completed uh, in 2014. Uh, when we had this uh, chance um, to be commissioned also, because this is a typical problem uh, that uh, of uh, open source projects, but uh, someone somewhere has to come funding for, for your working hours. Uh, and nice also if there is, is funds for material. So uh, um, we exhibited this in the Doers uh, exhibition when uh, we were asked like, uh, oh, do you want to exhibit your knitting machine? Uh, but yeah, that it should autonomously uh, uh, knit. So of course there is, um, we said, uh, well, autonomously uh, the brother knitting machine won't really knit, although there is one accessory for motor. And uh, and then we said like, okay, you know what? We will do a open source uh, machine using digital fabrication tools, but we are going to uh, kind of introduce the soft digital fabrication because also uh, 3D printers, they don't really need only to replicate themselves. They can also create the machines uh, for um, textiles or producing the textiles. And uh, in the GitHub, there are all the files. So um, the parts are uh, 3D printed and laser cut it. And you can see there are uh, wood beams. You can also use profiles if you want. Uh, and Arduino and maker beams, so the main things. And uh, yeah, here you can see uh, all the parts. Actually, tomorrow, actually, I'm quite. Uh, Happy that um, finally even the industry is in interested in this kind of machines. I'm going tomorrow uh, to do a workshop here in Estonia in the Elastic Yarn Factory who wants to have this machine as kind of a showcase or or, or demo their their yarn. So it's uh, uh, it's actually an interesting case um, because uh, well the open source machines and this kind of like, um, let's say industry always criticizes a bit, but uh, you know, uh, now we are so far that actually I'm going there to teach them how to make machine. <laughs> so it's kind of the paradigm is uh, transforming a bit. Uh, yeah, and here you can see all the video. We don't need the sound. Uh, so you can regulate the speed uh, and uh, actually um, it doesn't need the pattern yet, but uh, this is kind of our ultimate dream that we can also um, need a pattern with it and it should also have some sensors, for instance, if it gets stuck or something that it stops. Uh, but uh, in in this doers exhibition it had knit uh, for eight months uh with uh, the only problem i think the driver once burned but yeah they are quite uh, stable uh, to knit and and that's why actually we decided to make uh, circular at that point because circulars they are very stable machines because they don't change direction well they can change direction but then they become unstable uh, so if you are interested, you can check uh, all the files in the in the GitHub. Uh, so uh, then we thought actually we do this our open source knitting machine and and kind of one worry of us is solved that we don't have to depend on this obsolete knitting machine that I don't have to hunt for it for these models in the in the eBay. But then we run into other problems uh, because uh, the needles we were using, they are the silver reed uh, needles, uh, uh, I think KR or K8, something like I can, 
you can find in the documentation. Uh, it uh, it became uh, the, the stock finished, so there are kind of uh, at least I don't know really if you, somebody you know you can let me know if you find them, uh, but there are no needles to find like this. Um, and uh, this was the problem. Many people who wanted to build, they were kind of emailing us and we said, well, uh, we have needles for maybe two, three more machines, but uh, if you don't find them, you should modify um, the, the design because, uh, you know, it's open source and, and you can uh, develop further. So luckily, there are uh, new uh, new kind of uh, study or project by open source ecology who are very kind of keen on uh, uh, developing further and this machine and their kind of first task that because uh, I model in SketchUp, so um, SketchUp is not open source. Uh, so they uh, first they transferred all the all the models uh, of the parts into OpenSCAT. Uh, so OpenSCAT is open source and the code-based uh, software for 3D modeling. Um, and, uh, and then they found out, oh, they don't have also needles. So what they did, they modified the design uh, for, ah, and their idea was to do a parametricer because uh, with OpenSCAT, you can do this, uh, it's code-based. Uh, and uh, and of course, if you use Grasshopper uh, B2, um, so you can actually decide which kind of diameter you will use at the moment. This I think uh, 27 with the 60 needles, but uh, with uh, their new work, you can actually make it uh, larger or smaller. Uh, so they changed a couple of things. Uh, now you can use uh, brother uh, needles, which are longer ones. And they are much more available, but still they are also, they say it's like 10 years uh, stock uh, because there are not so many knitting machines. Well, there are no demand because uh, there are not so many knitting produ machines produced anymore. Uh, so here is their improvement. So uh, here you can see uh, the shorter one is the original one we used before. So this is uh, what I explained you before. I don't know exactly the term and I call it like a nose that you can take it and uh, in the rail of the mountain and uh, push needle up or down. Uh, and here is a new knitting uh, needle, what they use, so it's much longer. So they had to modify design that uh, the needle pass through the, the, the holder. Uh, yeah, here you can see the closer. So this is uh, kind of the improvement for the, for the new needles. And here they did for the 36 uh, needle uh, circular knitting, so it's much smaller. And uh, I love this kind of uh, photos of uh, total DIY, like uh, probably in the kitchen knitting with a hammer as a weight, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice. And here, okay, here is uh, a bit more specifically, like uh, how you have to think how this mechanics works. So in the end, if you do machine, machine, you have to think uh, a bit like um, mechanically and kinetically how, how, how the stuff is going to move and where comes the yarn and, and so on. So uh, how to make needle move? Um, if here is the mountain and this is the rail here, and this is kind of the the needle's nose, let's say like this. Um, so you have to have it kind of in between somewhere where it can then, when the mountain comes, come to come into the mountain to this rail. And the rail is like, um, uh, like a triangle. Then what it makes, it push it up. Here is the movement of the, of the needle, so to say, that it pushes up and needle can take the yarn and then it also pushes down that needle can squeeze this new stitch 
through the lash and make actually and come up again. So this is the basic movement that you have to push the needle up and also feed the yarn in the into the right place and then push it down again in its place. So here is like different uh, stages. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, mostly motor, motor. Uh, well, you can also first test uh, with the manual, uh, like manual power moving. Like if your your kind of movement idea functions, and then put the gears and the motor, because adding the gears and motor is 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 uh, is more trivial uh, task. And this is uh, is kind of ambitious uh, idea how to make uh, on the circular knitting 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 machine uh, pattern is that uh, there should be not only let's say one rail there should be two rails uh, because you have to kind of select which needle you are going to push up. So uh, here, this uh, open source ecology, they had idea to put the rail gear or the linear gear, uh, um, yeah, gear into into the mountain. So there will be uh, two uh, motors, and that it can actually switch between the different rails, and then you have to know it then which needle is which and be able to then move in the right uh, needle i mean it's it's kind of uh, easier if your needles are not so dense but if they are quite dense then it might be uh, tricky but this is kind of idea level at the moment uh, they haven't done it and we haven't done it yet but there should be a yeah, more, more complex uh, because at the moment the mountain is static. There is only one mountain uh, and uh, and so on. Probably I have to move further. Um, and uh, well, it's a bit pity to say, uh, but uh, our flat knitting is still uh, as far as it was. I think uh, last year or even two years ago. So we haven't. Had, uh, we haven't had found a chance to work on it. So, uh, but briefly about the the idea. So we decided uh, to do a flat knitting machine first, trying uh, with a manual, uh, manually operating, and then if it works, then adding the motors. And the idea is to have it modular that. Uh, and with uh, with flat one is much easier than the circular one because circular if you decide to change the diameter you have to reprint recut the things but here you could just like add uh, it's in a way like um, yeah like a CNC you can scale it up uh, you can have it uh, 50, uh, 60 centimeters long but you can also have it. Uh, six uh, meters long and produce uh, maybe like uh, garments for the architecture. Why not? Later on, we see also examples. So there are also other projects like, for instance, uh, a really simple one is the IDA Open Source 3D Printable Circle Machine. Uh, they have also documentation. Uh, well, they have 3D printed um, needles. Uh, if you do that, you should maybe try to use um, uh, this uh, for, form uh, for, form labs, yeah, form labs, or or some other 3D printer which is able to to produce very fine surface because yarn gets stuck everywhere. So if it's not really slippery material, so like 3D printed plastic. Um, so it will be uh, problematic. Uh, then there is one uh, kind of uh, very uh, curious project, I would say, because I would never think to do a knitting machine this way, but uh, why not? 
it's not very efficient, I would say, but uh, it's uh, kind of uh, proving its uh, its goal. It's by um, uh, Ichi Hiroshi. Uh, it was uh, it was in uh, was this Fabric Academy or no? I think it's not Fabric Academy. It's uh, Fab Academy. Uh, Fab Academy 2013. And he, here we can see also, uh, here we can see also how he resolved this uh, uh, knitting, knitting technique. And there are, um, on both sides, there are servo motors, which then slowly transport the yarn. So it would be like really, let's say, slow knitting. And uh, and how the servers are moved, they are um, this um, uh, stepper motor with the uh, beam gear or how it's called, yeah, which which scrolls uh, scrolls them further. And what uh, in the front servo motor is doing, it's uh, feeding the yarn. And the other one is uh, pushing the needle. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. In his kind of documentation was the mark that uh, does knitting machine but doesn't knit. So it's um, kind of an uh, interesting solution. Yeah, here will be a problem to go backwards now, because uh, uh... Okay, he pushed somehow it back. But yeah, one, one thing is you do the yarn feeding, but then it's really, really the, the knitting that it takes place. This is uh, another problem. Okay, this was... Uh... And uh, well, in 2015, also Wired Magazine woke up and discovered uh, knitting and said, well, this is a new new 3D knitting, because if you look at knitting, actually it's um, as 3D printing also additive uh, fabrication method, because the garment is uh, growing row by row. And there, there was also another, uh, or it was the same, yeah, this was the article, the new wave of additive uh, manufacturing. So there are a lot of actually interest um, uh, let's say, doing desktop or, or coming up with a desktop um, textile manufacturing uh, machines. Uh, famous Niterate, uh, so uh, when you remember uh, Open Knit, so this, uh, the author of Open Knit, he is one of the co-founders of uh, Niterate and it was also on uh, Kickstarter and now they promise to deliver, I think, April 2020, the first machines. So many schools and independent designers are waiting because it's a kind of a small scale industrial machine which could fit in the studio and, and knit fine garments and also um, uh, complex patterns but uh, let's see it's it's cost around uh, 10,000 euros so it's actually not so cheap and we still don't know how good it functions so uh, but everyone is waiting let's say let's see what happens um, there are also other approaches not only uh, do a machine uh, for instance, Unmade, uh, they were named, I think, in 2015, the best uh, London startup. 
And what they do, they rent, yes, they rent a stall, which is industrial knitting machine in their studio and they uh, produce um, scarves, uh, um, sweaters and so on uh, with um, their own uh, pattern design and what they did, uh, they built on top the software of the stall software. So they are able to, for instance, take uh, drawings from iPad and then converting them into um, into the pattern on this uh, big scale uh, machine. Uh, also Fabian Sierra did kind of the same. So did, she did the Kickstarter to buy uh, the, the stall machine, which is a hundred uh, thousand uh, euro machine. And uh, she's producing, she made a knit yak and, uh, and uh, she's also, let's say, code based designer artist and producing uh, generative patterns, so every pattern is different and making uh, the scarves, she's also selling them. So there is kind of other approach, uh, um, not to do the machine, but actually kind of uh, update the software on them. But if we uh, talk about the machines, so they are this kind of uh, two gatekeepers. One is the German company uh, Stoll. Uh, very um, old, um, it's a proprietary software they use, of course, uh, and it's uh, expensive, it's big and so on, so it's really a machine for, for uh, the industry. Uh, the same is the Shimasheki, uh, also big, expensive, uh, I think they still operate by floppies uh, in a funny way, but uh, yeah, they somehow still survive. Uh, they were the, um, uh, I think the first kind of industrial glove machine, they started to sell it in 62. And uh, if you compare Stoll and Shimasheki, I think Stoll is, has focused mostly like on uh, fine garments and pattern. And Shimasheki uh, uh, idea was always to have these stitchless uh, garments, for instance, that the sweater is coming out, the gloves are coming out, so there are already ready product coming out that you don't have to sew it and stitch it and so on. This is the difference, but if in the industry you look, these are the main uh, machines, they are there and uh, they kind of, uh, uh, they rule the knit knittery production so to say. And then um, the other kind of complexity uh, with, uh, with um, garment production or the clothing production is um, how to do from the flat uh, garment a 3D uh, object or the clothing. So there is, for instance, even the Disney uh, had made um, a research uh, and the software that uh, it already calculates for the machine where it has to increase, decrease, where it has to uh, make a hole and where it has to join and so on. But this is again possible on the complex, uh, this Stoll or Shimasheki uh, machines, which normally like knitters, uh, they do uh, like by themselves. And uh, and that's why this kind of profession, let's say, exists. It's like a pattern drawer, right? So they make the calculations and they know exactly how to do. But now is trend to make it like more software-based, AI-based. That uh, already from our kind of body shape, it's already everything calculated how to produce the perfect uh, clothing or accessory. Okay, if you're interested, you can look the video, but I think I have to hurry, otherwise uh, we um, don't um, uh, make until until the end. Uh, this is, uh, now I will show you a bit more, let's say, alternative examples. Uh, this is nice, uh, um, nice example, uh, Mekal School, Damien Ludi and Colin Felix. Uh, rocking knit, uh, yeah, rocking knit. So by, uh, uh, okay, what is that?
just by this uh, swinging movement, the, the gears, they are moving and uh, probably the circular knitting machine, even they didn't make, they, they, they bought the ready one. I don't know, I think so. Um, and uh, this movement is realized and actually by swinging then or rocking, then the hat is or scarf is produced. Then here is, uh, you remember this old first um, circular knitting machine, this metal ones. Uh, this is uh, used by uh, the wind factory. So they attach, actually they are kind of a successfully uh, existing uh, company. Again, I cannot. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's uh, not like hand powered. Instead of uh, hand powering, uh, it's attached to the windmill. And uh, since in your UK they're quite windy, um, it's enough that the knitting machine moves and knits and they sell scarves and make furniture and so on. So this is uh, their wind factory, how it is uh, produced. Mm -hmm. Um. 365 knitting clock uh, by uh, Sirene, Sirene Elise Wilhelmsen. Um, again, circular knitting machine. So uh, she was questioning time and the meaning of time. Uh, and during a year, then this uh, clock is uh, knitting. And uh, in the end of the year, you will get a scarf. <laughs> So this is kind of a pro product with the process and knitting. Very beautiful. And uh, very famous artwork, the knitting uh, machine by Dave Cole, uh, where uh, then um, two uh, uh, kind, of, kind of like uh, Fab Labs, no? Uh, Kuka is, Kukas are used for everything. So here is also the the robots or the tractors, uh, they have uh, really these knitting sticks and they are uh, try, like trying to knit the American flag. So really heavy industry uh, tools used for um, uh, soft uh, textile production or even the granny work, let's say like this. Then a bit uh, alternative uh, thing, uh, so... Um, the project is called Column by uh, uh, Bastian Byers and the others. Um, what uh, they are actually exploring, I think they're more like uh, they have architectural and space design interests. If you're interested, you can look also the video. Uh, there, is, there is up also kind of circular knitting machine, but what they are doing, they are treating this um, garment with different um, liquids and uh, microbes, uh, microbes, but uh, changing the color also. And then it's, uh, it is kind of a solid uh, thing that can be used for different uh, purposes. So let's uh, jump from uh, knitting to weaving. And again, uh, I mean, the ones who know uh, about weaving, maybe it's uh, it's boring for you, but in weaving, uh, you have to know this five or I think it was five movements, basic movements, but but that have to be done unless you cannot really uh, start weaving. But again, these movements, are they done by the machine by by you or by wind or by something else it's already another matter but uh, somehow these movements need to be uh, performed if you want to have a woven garment 
primary motions needed to weave a fabric. The first motion is shedding. Shedding means separation. In the case of weaving, it means the separation of the warp yarns with some forming the lower shed and others forming the upper shed. This separation is made possible by the up and down movement of the harness frames. The second motion needed is filling insertion. Through the open shed of warp yarns, the filling yarn is inserted so that it interlaces with the warp yarns to produce a particular weave design. Beat up is the third motion that the weaving machine performs. It is done with the aid of a reed as it moves forward, beating the filling yarn into the fabric. As these first three weaving motions are taking place in a timed sequence, the warp yarns are simultaneously let off or unwound, the fourth motion, as the produced fabric passes to a take-up system, the fifth motion, to form a cloth roll. These motions are required on all weaving machines, whether they are hand looms or automatic looms. There is another one. It tells more precisely what happens in the, the electronic uh, loom, where the electricity is used and motors. When a new denim style is put on a weaving machine, it's necessary to draw or insert the warp yarns through various loom elements. The flow of the yarn in the loom is easily seen from the illustration. The weaving process starts with the sized yarn coming off the loom beam in a single sheet or layer of yarn. The yarn then proceeds over a tension or whip roll that is designed to maintain a constant level of tension on the warp yarns throughout the entire weaving cycle. Each yarn then travels through its own drop wire that serve as stop motion detectors. When yarn tension drops too low or when the yarn breaks, the metal drop wire will complete an electrical circuit and the loom will stop. Next, each warp yarn then passes through its own heddle that is suspended in the harness. The heddle has an eye through which the yarn passes and allows for exact control of each yarn. The harnesses control the raising and lowering of the warp yarns. The yarns then proceed through the dents of the reed. The reed is a comb-like device that maintains the spacing of the warp yarns, controls the width during weaving, and performs the beating up of the filling yarn into the body of the cloth. The point where the yarn is beaten up into the cloth is called the fell of the cloth. This is the transition point where the yarn becomes fabric. The cloth now winds over the take-up roll, sometimes called the sand roll or press roll, which, when combined with the let off of the loom beam, controls the number of picks per inch and in the fabric. Finally, the cloth is rolled onto a cloth roll. The threading or drawing in of the yarns can be done manually or automatically on drawing in machines. Of course, manual drawing in is much more time consuming. When the same end count and draw is to follow on a loom with a depleted warp, then a full beam of yarn can be tied to the yarns of the old beam. This can be done by the use of a tying in machine, which automatically selects an end of yarn from the old beam and ties it to the appropriate end on the new beam. This can be done very quickly with minimum loom downtime. Those kind of the, the basics of uh, weaving. Um, and now uh, this other video explains you uh, how the pattern is done on the loom because uh, uh, you can uh, uh, yeah, you can select different threads and have totally different garments. In order to better understand basic fabric design and construction, we must look at the components of a woven fabric. Warp yarns are fed into weaving in a direction parallel to the selvages of the fabric. The filling yarns are inserted perpendicular to the warp. The edge of the fabric has a selvage, and with some insertion methods, there is a fringe. The fringe is created by the ends of the filling yarn projecting from the edge of the fabric and can be tucked back into the cloth with a tucking unit. The plain weave is the oldest, simplest, and most often used woven structure. It repeats on the minimum of two ends and two picks.
This area is a single repeat of a plane weave. One can easily see that adjacent warp yarns weave in opposition to each other. When one end is up, the adjacent ends are down. After the filling is inserted, the warp yarns switch positions. The cross-sectional view shows the up and down movement of the warp yarn. Notice the blue and green warp yarns are moving in opposite direction to each other. Woven patterns are most often depicted on graph paper. The graph indicates how one would depict a plain weave. When the warp yarn is shaded black, the warp end is up and the filling is down. When the warp end is up, this is referred to as a riser or float. When the warp end is down, this is referred to as a sinker and is depicted by a white square in the woven pattern. Plain weave fabrics have the highest number of interlacings of any weave. The result of this dense weaving is a relatively low tearing strength, higher tensile strength, lower snagging, tendency to ravel less, and tendency to wrinkle more. The basket weave is a derivative of the plain weave. The most common of baskets is the 2x2 basket. The repeat area is 4 ends by 4 picks. All ends weave in pairs, as do the picks. The illustration shows a 2x2 two two weave, which gives a distinct checkerboard effect. In basket weaves, if both warp and filling risers are equal, then the weave is considered to be a regular or balanced weave. Other regular basket weaves are 3x3 three three and 4x4. Four four. All basket weaves are not regular. For example, a 3x2 three or a 3x2x1x1 three by by one by one, or a 3x1. The Oxford weave is also a plain weave derivative. In this weave, two warp ends weave as one, while each filling yarn weaves alone. In most cases, the warp yarns are half the size of the filling yarns. Um, of course, there are also uh, open source looms, uh, for instance, uh, Fab Loom. Uh, you can also uh, find all the designs uh, online. They, they use the CNC to, to do it. Pretty uh, good size, actually. Uh, if you want to learn, it's a mini loom. I think it's a perfect uh, just to laser cut and start uh, weaving. Mm, there is a nice project uh, by Pamela Liu, uh, Dotti, the desktop jacquard loom. Uh, what she, uh, it's, uh, I would say it's a hybrid machine, so it's a manual and electric uh, machine. So um, uh, the kind of uh, putting uh, certain yarns up and pushing down is. Uh, Done, done by um, Arduino and the uh, motors, and then uh, manually uh, pushing the thread through them. Uh, so uh, it's kind of, uh, let's say, not everything has to be automized. It's sometimes it's too complex or easier to do manually. Why, why not to do manually? Of course. Um, then uh, rail read uh, project. Uh, it's uh, among weavers quite uh, popular, I would say like this, it's from Estonia and uh, the author, she is a professional uh, textile artist and designers, designer and she made kind of like a accessory or add-on uh, to the loom which uh, make uh, the, the, the woven uh, fabric uh, more 3D or relief. And uh, this add-on, what it's doing is just like uh, pushing, uh, making different distance uh, in the um, in the yarns, and this way actually producing then uh, different tensions, and and you the result is um, uh, quite unique uh, fabric. Uh, so it's uh, totally um, without any uh, electronics, nothing, uh, but uh, this is, let's say, uh, uh, 
additional accessory which uh, to the loom machine um, which uh, enables then textile designer to do uh, different uh, fabric also they uh, together with uh, some other co collaborators is Kadi Payubu she made a multi multi weave um, uh, using the traditional uh, weaving uh, Viewing techniques. I think the video is, is just their prototype still, but uh, basically, uh, but basically, it's an old technique where uh, then weaving. Uh, uh, well, also it's called basket technique. Uh, so, for instance, uh, how you do the baskets, uh, you can also actually. Um, weave the yarn across uh, certain beams and then uh, produce the strength. So very basic, uh, but still for certain uh, objects uh, which are soft but also resistant. And they have a software where you can then uh, select uh, which shape you want to use and then place the beams accordingly. And then also um, explain machine where it has to travel. So it's uh, again, it's a classical uh, axis of CNC or 3D uh, printing technology and turned into a, a, a soft digital fabrication, I would say like this. There are also other examples for this. Um, okay, here I won't stop. I mean, there is also a lot of Lego used for for weaving. Um, totally uh, manual uh, is also rectangular loom. So, for instance, you can you can knit on your fingers if you want. Uh, you can also use a simple. Uh, Sticks in order to to have the kind of a grid of uh, of the obstacles for thread, and yeah, of course there are three D printed uh, loom for this. Uh, there are circular looms. There are also Af Afghan looms. It's kind of like almost the eight to make possible uh, to uh, to need kind of uh, wider garments. Also for sure, three D printed ones. So there are different techniques, and if you scale it up, you can suddenly go uh, uh, more into space and uh, and experience uh, installations, fields, um, and and so on. So here is a giant knit by Nancy. Still, the principle is the same, but things are scaled up. Uh, the material is also scaled up, I would say, because it's a rope and so on. Um, also uh, from Fab Academy, Francisca Perona uh, one year did the big circular loom uh, where um, um, uh, when... yeah, Anastasia, you're selling me something. I don't know exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, uh, I don't see here things. Uh, yeah, she did the furniture from this against same principle. I think there are all um, uh, all design files online, uh, even with a grasshopper. I think so, so you can scale up and down. Uh, also, one example uh, of uh, oh, wait, digital wrapping machine. Um, this. I was thinking like why it is useful, like <laughs> why you should wrap some yarn around something. But then I was thinking, um, uh, listening you doing all your kombucha stuff and so on, and it's like, okay, there are a lot of like this biotextile, but but maybe you can also kind of uh, fabricate it further, like do, do some kind of, uh, uh, Yarn from this and uh, or wrap it somewhere like to kind of transform. Uh, yeah, this is just my ideas. Huh? Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, maybe it might be useful uh, for totally like different purpose. 
and uh, back to this uh, leaving the same what you do multi um, actually this is a much uh, better project um, uh, yeah I, I cannot pronounce really his name uh, but he's uh, weaving um, uh, again, really, really old technique, uh, the bottoms for the shoes and applying then uh, certain hardening material. So you can see, but it's, it's uh, yarn. Uh, then you can also uh, do a furniture with a weaving technique. Um, just an example for you, scale-wise, uh, this is the industrial high-speed circular machine uh, doing the mesh packs, so enormous, and when it works, everything vibrates. Um, to the sewing, uh, here is the basic technique, uh, how the sewing works. So when we sew, maybe we don't realize, but this is kind of a sewing machine, uh, how the thread is taken and pulled through the material and then back again. Uh, so uh, the sewing is, I mean, they're like machine-wise, they're quite cheap actually, and there are different versions like portable and for kids. And of course they're DIY, knitting machine, uh, sewing machines, sorry. Um, then uh, crochet, crochet is like, actually I haven't seen really crochet uh, machine, but crochet technique itself is very uh, interesting and useful. So there are, uh, you can do shoes also from crochet. Uh, Mika, Satomi and Hana, they have uh, ohm hook that you can crochet resistance inside your thing already. Um, also, uh, maybe you noticed all this uh, fabric design is super like mathematical, actually. So um, uh, if you want, <laughs> and at the same time, it is, looks very natural and from nature. So uh, when you do crochet, uh, you can uh, do also hyperbolic uh, planes, so uh, increasing uh, constantly uh, the radius and uh, having, um, uh, here I have, having really kind of mushroomy effects, something like this. Uh, I think in some fabric, uh, fabric academy, someone was doing. So they are quite, uh, but the logic is kind of, yeah, you multiply your radius and it's it's quite mathematical uh, procedure, but at the same time you see how how nature close they are. Okay, running, running because time is ticking. Um, braiding machine uh, pro produce ropes. Uh, they are uh, when they move, they are quite funny because they spin around. Uh, you have instruct table. Uh, it means you have all extra uh, instructions, so maybe you don't need to 3D print everything. Mostly you can laser cut actually. And uh, there is a nice example. I want to show you yet another video. Okay, so it explains you, maybe at home you can look uh, with, uh, maybe audio is good. They still don't do. So uh, they also explained that the weaving is used in the aeronautic technology. What are they? I don't know if they talk. And actually, it's um, of course it's a uh, fiberglass and so on, but. Uh, but still they are using the weaving machine in, instead of like aluminum parts because it's uh, much more, it's lighter and more uh, boost. So here you can see the machine. It's kinetically very amazing. Yeah, it's a braiding, sorry, braiding. Maybe. So it's kind of very uh, uh, big uh, rope. 
and custom because it uh, has different radius in the different parts. So Anastasia, you told maybe you want to do a braiding machine, so it's a kind of ab ambitious plan for you. <laughs> Yeah, so you can, you can see that, yeah, I just wanted to show this that, uh, yes, braiding machine can be very simple for a simple rope, but it can also, it is also used in like aeronautic technology. So it's not really just uh, craft, it's, it's quite a lot of science also. Uh, Braidomatic, uh, also you can uh, doing similar thing, but the different design. Ropomatric, uh, hand powered one. Um, so you can, if you're interested, you can uh, research in the different uh, approaches and, and find out which works the best. Then I want also to talk about like yarn spinning. Uh, and then I started to think that actually I have also this spinning wheel uh, in my summer house, like really old, and it is still used by by uh, some people and it uh, it moves uh, the wheel moves by a uh, pedal and uh, you can uh, uh, from the wool you can get uh, your yarn from this but of course it takes a lot of space uh, and the pedal one it it is from around uh, like uh, 1900s but of course the origins uh, without the pedal was much much before that but then you ha you can you have actually electric eel wheel nano by Maurice Ribble. It looks like he's quite successful. I didn't know that there are so much demand. He has um, kicks. He completed uh, successfully the Kickstarter. So yeah, the only thing what this does is spinning, and you can get produced your yarn and the uh, less fancy is um, i think it's uh, open source so you can uh, figure out how he has made it he also sells this one um elo i think uh, they visited uh, fab academy F fabric academy last year right or yeah something like this um it's uh, in theory, it's also open source. I didn't find their files, but maybe you look around and you can find. They also uh, produce yarn uh, that you can control the thickness of your yarn from the raw material. Um, yeah, just uh, to finish the brinding uh, machine topic that uh, uh, actually is quite uh, popular, so you can uh, order already there are different services making your cable uh, on the kind of pattern you want and uh, when we talk about software there are a lot of software for uh, stitching and embroidery um, actually this is for crochet uh, also as you saw uh, the language of uh, uh, fabric design is kind of similar across the fields, so uh, you have to know certain um, uh, certain kind of icons or or that to understand what you have to need in order to achieve this result. But of course, there are a lot of um, tutorials and and uh, and so on. And I think if you want to understand or learn learn uh, crochet it shouldn't be a problem um then as i told ai is already very interested uh, to do all this uh, garment designs uh, you can read more uh, on this if you're interested uh, again for stitching not embroidery now for stitching uh, yeah you do your pattern and it's just easier for you to do the stitching uh, manually then. Uh, then the big field is uh, embroidery. Um, well, uh, I think I won't show you video now because we are kind of out of uh, 
time, um, but the idea is he, he, this is an industrial one. It has many, uh, I can put on the background, uh, many uh, threads and uh, again, they do a drawing and um, insert into the mach machine with the floppy <laughs> in a funny way, but yes, the, the floppy, uh, the industry is quite floppy based still. And uh, then they they embroid this logo or whatever on the ready uh, clothing or it can be also garment. But normally, yeah, all these logos sometimes they put some some fabric down and then they uh, they embroid the drawing there. Again, there are also open build embroidery, the software based, and also. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, it's not CNC I would say but they use CNC uh, technology to uh, to move around the fabric below the sewing machine so you don't need to have embroidery machine you can also use sewing machine because what it's doing is doing the stitches and you have to be able to control uh, where it stitches or sews in a way and uh, move down your fabric and also control uh, the machine. They have also all these uh, files and uh, and yeah, here they, what they do, they don't move the machine, they move the, the fabric uh, down and it has to be tension. In uh, all, in machines where, where you produce um, uh, fabric, knitting, weaving, uh, embroidery, sewing, it has to be tensioned uh, because uh, otherwise it's a mess. You have Lego solutions for this. Then you have also Machina Bordadora, com Computerizada DIY. So he kind of took the parts of old embroidery machine and, and uh, made his own. So he can do quite large scale uh, ones. Uh, yeah, if you are interested, you can also uh, look the video later on your own. Uh, he explains quite a lot. Uh, open source hardware is also one uh, embroidery, uh, um, em embroider modern um, is a software. So there are a lot of software. Ink Stitch uh, for Inkscape users, also for Scratch users that you can do your drawing and then convert into the embroidery. This is interesting. Uh, this is the fabulous tufting machine, um, open uh, fabric academy project. I haven't seen it working, didn't find the video, but the tufting is the carpets, um, how to make a carpets and a lot of Carpets makers, they still do by hand. Uh, we actually uh, were lucky to see it in um, in Sweden. There is a big factory, Hitex. Uh, so they, uh, this is also a modular actually approach. So uh, they use, um, I put video on the background while explaining. Uh, they use also profiles that they can do whatever size uh, they want and everything the tufting is automized, so they can uh, tuft all kind of uh, fine uh, carpets and uh, complex patterns and so on. So um, it's throwing the thread through uh, carpet uh, fabric and then uh, it depends, cutting or not cutting depends on the, the pattern like you see here. So you can do very uh, nice uh, carpets and very equal ones. Yeah. Uh, and of course we have hybrid techniques. This is maybe uh, the most interesting for you because you like the, I think why you are doing Fabric Academy class is also to explore new processes uh, famous uh, KUKA, uh, you can uh, make it use while, while doing this project uh, if you can. Uh, for instance, here is a robot winder, so uh, they are winding ground, uh, yarn around shapes and then applying 
hardening material and then using for mostly giving a shape the same similar that he's she's also doing the molds i show you the video because it's quite i enter the password oh my god we don't have the password so she closed the video uh but uh yeah she's doing um uh, molds molds and then wrapping around the molds molds like this uh, wrapping around uh, the rope and applying latex on it and paint uh let's see uh here she says silly connection well uh, yeah so the video yeah it's interesting the process video is not online anymore so but here maybe you can if you search you can find later on uh but it's yeah it's kind of new approach how to make the clothing because uh, she makes actually molds for for this um, wrapping process and then applying uh, uh, latex or silicone to the rope that it's stays together and also uh, it's waterproof and it gives very uh, interesting uh, texture Um, digital wax printer, so uh, you can uh, modify the CNC machine and put uh, hot wax instead of uh, drill. And uh, well, wax technique is like uh, it's a known one that uh, later on you can dye the um, the fabric and uh, where the wax is on it, uh, it remains then original color in this case white uh fiber spray by ali yerder and, and anastasia so they were uh also uh, producing let's say clothing or or the fashion on the fly by sp by spraying uh the thread into um into a material i think anastasia can explain the process better uh, than me but it's again a totally different uh, approach from the traditional one. Uh, this is a YAC project uh, since uh, robot composite. Uh, so it's more uh, since, uh, yeah, uh, probably the students coming more from architecture. Um, again, uh, uh, weaving uh, technique and uh, composite uh, and putting uh, together making like more architectural uh, shape uh, but from the soft matters uh, this is very nice sculpture made oh my god i cannot so is this uh, sound button is all the time it's uh, is hidden by the menu and they cannot press. Uh, so um, they uh, used uh, um, a knitting technology to uh, knit all this uh, skin of the sculpture and then um, uh, apply it uh, to the to the structure. Um, of course, they uh, they use some uh, hardening material again uh yeah this is the installation which is totally like scaled up but in the end it's 25 kilos so it's um not so huge in terms of the the weight but uh, then when it's done then it's yeah cement mixture yeah with the cement they put yeah and then So amazing project. Mm -hmm. oh, um, then Turm uh, uh, 2 by uh, Bastian uh, Byers. Uh, again, um, uh, I put this. 
again, it's a, let's say, architectural approach uh, because he's uh, building um, a structure for, I think it was, um, what he was saying, one moment, uh, water harvesting textiles. And, uh, but um, his machine is very uh, sculptoric in a way. Uh, he's uh, winding the thread around and at the same time applying also uh, a hardener. Um, not only hardener, but I think it's uh, some epoxy uh, that it gets um, hard and uh, the machine is able to pull it one kind of tore up and start to weave yet another structure and by this he is building uh, the tower but here is this uh, video is also nice that you can see all these uh, kinetic mechanisms like what kind of like gears and change chains uh, he is using for uh, uh, realizing all this movement i think it's goes further and further. Um, yeah. But this is, yeah, amazing that it's also, um, it succeeds that the machine pushes up the structure also and starts uh, continuous from the same place, but with a, with a new one. So it's, uh, you can really build the tall, um, yeah, you can see here tall towers. And again, it's circular, not linear, because circular is much more stable because it doesn't change the direction. Yeah, so it's... Uh... And we are close to the end, I think, so... Yeah, here is uh, one artistic example, the new way of knit. Or, or I would say more like weaving by Petros Vrelis, where uh, by uh, thread mesh he achieves to do uh, portraits. Uh, he did his own uh, circular uh, loom, like here you see, and then through uh, passing the threads from one side to another side, uh, he, he is able to do the, the portraits. A uh, funny example, uh, which was popular some years ago, uh, glue jeans. Uh, well, this designer just became popular because he decided to glue jeans together instead of sewing and apply very colorful uh, um, glue. Um, Fabric Academy uh, project uh, field uh, where um, they came up uh, with the circular textile economy. Uh, there are two machines which, uh, which destroy the old clothing and then they felt um, the new material so it can be used uh, in, the, in the, the civil buildings, for instance, isolation, mattresses. Um, why not packaging and so on so it's uh, yeah you can check out uh, their uh, their work here on the links and uh, well uh, that's it um, I am uh, a bit over time uh, sorry for that uh, and I hope uh, it was understandable and inspiring for you for your homework next. Um, next week. Ah, Anastasia, you are muted. I think everyone went to sleep. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of information. Uh, yes. But it's nice uh, that you have seen at least like, you know, many students, they don't come uh, even from a fashion background. Um, they don't. They have never seen this kind of technologies, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very nice to start to understand that there are very many, many different kinds. And also, like of course, Varvara and Mar, they are trying to include them all, but there are a lot more. Uh, so yeah. it's not only like.
the the good thing is that uh, you've seen that you can use it like uh, not only in the textile industry but you can use it in other industries and yeah. then uh, and more and more just, yes and also like even functional or not functional aesthetic uh, or like uh, artistic or so uh, you can make uh, stupid machines you can make intelligent machines you can copy machines you can hack machines so um adjust with the what your knowledge is and what your level and uh, of course the exercise is very ambitious for a week so it's fine if you don't finalize it by next week but you have a project open so it's it's normal that maybe some things will not uh, be finished by next week i mean uh, you see that uh, varvara they have been developing the circular knitting for quite some time. Still, there are like updates from other people that they are contributing. But you also see that we have nice cases of uh, people that they make uh, new machines or like open source machines, and they then they get like funded or they get uh, they go on Kickstarter, so they you can even make like companies uh, with that, like uh, Elo Studio, for example, or like Niterate, which is in a bigger scale. So you got the overview and uh, thank you so much uh, for staying with us even later. And uh, yes, I will upload your presentation uh, now to the class archive so that people can see the videos and see you, Mark, Emar, see, see you next week. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are there any Good. questions? Are there any questions from anybody? Everyone's no. quiet. <laughs> okay, perfect. I will stop recording. Okay.